Hello everyone and welcome to the first installment of We Are The One Percent. My name is Ryan, aka Pippy Skippy, and today I'm joined by my real life friend and in-game friend Maloney. Uh, Maloney, welcome. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, so first off I'd like to just start um, by letting people know that anyone that follows Halo Tracker and the Classic community knows that you're ranked in the 1%. And today we're just going to run through a couple of gameplays on Beaver Creek, Prisoner, and Damnation. I just wanted to start that off good. kind of by asking, uh, what controller settings do you use? Uh, bumper jumper with free sensitivity. That's the way to go. Okay. Uh, why do you think bumper jumper is the best controller setting to use in Halo? Well... I probably started it about halfway through my Halo 1 career, if you want to call it that. And, um, of course, I was always having trouble jumping through Halo 1 and shooting at the same time. So when Halo 3 rolled around, that was an option. Of course, I had to test it out and rolled over into this game, too. It's so much better. Yeah, so you Getting can... Getting pistol fights. Yeah, jumping and, uh, you know, keeping the reticle on their base the entire time. Right, so, so, you can, so you can strafe and jump and all that easily. Yeah, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, and so we know that a lot of the um, you know, a lot of the pros use special monitors and headsets and all that kind of stuff. Do you have anything like that when you play? No, it's just raw talent. Um, I have <laughs> it's, I have a $13 used headset from GameStop. Mm-hmm that my dog chewed a little bit. Nice. Um, and my TV is a 27-inch Toshiba tube with the flat screen. Oh, nice. So it's, like 400, it's like 400 pounds, but that's just... Right. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says, that, that's just the best TV to play on. The classic the classic CRT monitors, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's just the best. So it's, it's nice and bright, it's clear. It's not HD, of course, but... Right. That's just the way I like it. <laughs> so how long have you played... Halo? Uh, probably a month or two after Halo 1 came out. Oh wow, so like 10 years? So pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Off and on? Yeah, definitely. Okay, now can you think of anything specific throughout all the Halo games, 1, 2, 3, and now Reach with the classic playlist? Uh, can you think of a favorite Halo memory or experience? Uh, well, most recently, I'd have to say planning Halo 1 at my bachelor party mm -hmm. several months ago. Yeah, that was you fun. You should know because you, yeah, you were there. So basically, we had, a, we had eight guys show up over the course of two days. We rented a lake cabin, set up a bunch of TVs and Xboxes, and we land. And I was just destroying, and I think you told me I couldn't be host anymore. That was probably my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I remember screaming at you that you can't have host and color just because it's your bachelor party. Yeah, I remember that. Right. That was good. Yeah, it was awesome. Now, a lot of people have varying play styles. You know, they're really aggressive or they, you know, they sit back and they're a support player. How would you just best describe your play style and has it evolved or have you kind of stayed true? Uh, I, I think it's definitely stayed pretty much one way, and I think it rolls over into almost any game I'm playing, even StarCraft, for example. But I'm not a very, just by nature, I'm not a confrontational person, and I think that rolls over into my gameplay. Like, I'm more passive, I think, and I'm not one who's going to charge into something. Uh, I'd like to generally try to make the other person make the mistake, and then I can capitalize on it for the most part. So I'm not going to be charging into battles and just spamming forward, running at everything, throwing nades. I'd like to sit back and kind of react to what other people are doing instead of the other way. Okay, so uh, I asked you to set up three different uh, gameplays, one on Beaver Creek, one on Damnation, and one on Prisoner. So I have the Beaver Creek game loaded up, and I'm going to go ahead and start it here. Now, if I remember right, this is a matchmaking game, correct? Yeah, did you start it already here? Okay. Yeah, I'm loading it up here. Now, when we jump into this game, 
Slay. Look at the teams here, and we have a Totoso, Kira number three, Twisted Zeros, and you're a Scrub Kid versus TK Remix, the D Frequency, you and myself rushing out of the base here, trying to get OS. And again, like you said, you're style, you're not one to rush in, you kind of stay back, let people make yeah, a like mistake. And it looks like that's holding true here. Yeah, it's kind of hard because I wasn't in the front to begin with, but. Yeah. Um, you know, most people would probably just run forward and throw an aid. I, the perfect example, I just kind of like sat there and saw somebody poke their head out, and of course now I'm trying to take control of one side, which <laughs> one should know that blue sucks, but we didn't really have a choice. Yeah, and for most people who aren't, you know, as familiar with the the game style on this map, you start off as basically a rush for the OS. That's just kind of what it's developed into. Right. Um, so if you're not the first one out of the map, there's no point to just sprint to the OS. You're probably gonna die anyway, so I think that was a good decision. Right, and especially like if you're on a blue side, eventually you're gonna want to take control of red. So another good strategy, if you're one of the first last ones out of the base, um, what I like to do is sometimes just turn right around and go to the portal and come up behind him. Most, right, everyone's at this point, either front red or at the OS, and if I'm behind the base, I can a lot of times get a free kill or easily sort of turn the map on them. Right. So earlier you said that you know everyone pretty much knows that blue isn't the you know the best side of the map to control. Why do you feel that red base is that much better? Well, right now I'm I'm kind of right on the arch here. There's perfect examples I can see the entire map that way and also I can have some cover by dropping down that little lip and if I'm getting aided I can get into the cubby so I can have full vision of the map and I have protection whereas the other side um there's nowhere to hide or drop down except to leave you know, right into where the shotgun spawns which is terrible so it's just a lot more cover and um if they happen to make their way over to the sniper side, pretty much a free kill. They have no cover. Other than that cover that they have Double kill. Right. So, so you're saying that red base is better to control because you have more cover and you have better access to the arch and you can kind of keep people pinned to the side, hopefully. And that's like. Right. It's best. all about that arch, pretty much. Yeah. So we saw earlier you had that. Uh, Door grenade into the sniper hole. I, I gotta say, I love that grenade. You made the joke earlier, you know, Joe Montana tossing the, the winning touchdown right. pass, and it would have been so much better if you got a kill there, but it was still oh, yeah. sweet nonetheless. And when you're on top of the arch, you had that sweet three shot against, I think it was your scrub kid. Right. There's a just perfect opportunity of, you know, you can peek above and survey where people at. Yeah, and see that get a quick kill this and duck, move here that just right happened behind. was really smart. We were on blue base, we were pushing towards red, and instead of charging across with us, you went to the portal and got that, you know, that kill against Twisted when he didn't even know you were back there. That was smart. Right. That's an, an example of something that actually could happen right away in the beginning of the game, like I was saying earlier. Right. Most people are either in the front or coming out that same cubby. That's a exact exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, and I think, I think a lot of people can learn something from that move, and, and that's something easy to apply to your gameplay, you know, if your teammate's pushing red or at the start of the game, if you just want to, you know, try that, I think you'll find success with that. Right. Especially on this map, it's just all about locking down one side. Obviously, you'd rather have the red side, but right. because, because of those portals, it's so easy to... Um, have somebody get right behind you, and so, of course, it's easy for you to do it too. There's you got Owen there at the top. Yeah, yeah, Twisted had a, a good Revenge! And for people yeah. who aren't too familiar with the classic, I guess, leaderboard people, um, Twisted and your scrub kid have a very good job. They have good game awareness, so it's not just. You know, some random kids that you're up 34 to 19 right now. It's, you know, we've managed to gain control and get some kills, and it just yeah. shows you yeah, what. Yeah, pretty much all these games are, are being played against other good people, so um, if I'm getting owned, it's not lucky they're actually owning me, so. <laughs> and 
that's never fun to have that happen, but... You know, like I said, our team is, uh... <laughs> our team is having good map control, and... You know, you're on top arch again, you can see... I pushed over to blue base, I'm not sure... I had OS or, or what, but we kinda have some disruption, and now they're kind of all over the place. They're behind red, they're in the yeah. tunnels... But the well, same goes for if us. You are, you know, we're kind of all over if the you're place. On... Yeah, if you're on red bed like I was, it's also sometimes harder to get the OS, so it's... Um, when OS is about to come up, I think sometimes it's better to maybe try to flush them out of blue, and then we have <laughs> OS, yes, we can run up the ramp, and... So, sometimes I think it's a little easier doing that. Not to mention, if you're getting shot at, you can escape into red bed. A lot easier. Double yeah, that was a great move there. Avoided uh, shots and grenades from two people picked up the double kill. Yep, and there's an example where I didn't... I mean, I know I didn't have shields, but... I, I'm usually not going to be pushing out until I see an opportunity, so... I just kind of sat there and waited for someone else to poke their head around the rock, and they died. <laughs> and then I double backed and... I got the other kid with his pants down when he was mid... Nade throwing. Twist it again, man. You've got that sniper on respawn. Uh, speaking of power weapons on respawn, are you the type of player that, you know, likes to control the overshield and rockets and sniper, or are you more the player that kind of lets people grab it and just support and sit back? And... Uh. A little of both, it depends who I'm playing with. I mean, if I have three other really good teammates, I can obviously count on them to be also aware of when the overshield's gonna be spawning, so I don't have to constantly Five feel like I have to carry the remaining. team. So, if somebody's in just a better position than I am, grab it, I'm totally fine with that. Especially because you don't want five people or four rushing OS at the same time, because then you lose map control. and. Right. You know, if you're just fighting, if you're just trying to fight with somebody else trying to get it, there's just, only one can and the other kid's probably just vulnerable, so... Oh, that was so Unless close. I'm... That last... Sorry to interrupt here, but that... I gotta talk about that last kill. Twist Zero, you were one oh, yeah. shot away and he just... Yeah. got it off just a big one. I think I was literally in the middle of shooting. Yeah. Hopefully, we, yeah. ideally we would have traded, but whatever. Game so over. Like,